So you've taken a bunch of photographs that didn't turn out quite the way you liked them. Now what? Today we're going to talk about photo editing. Hi, my name is Jeremy Corwin and these tutorials is about, are about a program called Pixlr. Uh, you can you spend a lot of money on a photo editor. You could buy Photoshop, for example. That's what a lot of professional photographers use. But there's a lot to Photoshop. And like I said, it's pretty expensive. So if you're new to this, I've got a free option for you that will introduce you to a lot of the same functions that you can get in a program that costs hundreds of dollars. And that program is called Pixlr. Let's take a look at Pixlr. One of the great things about Pixlr is it works right in your web browser. So you go to pixlr.com. And when you get there, you're going to be uh, presented with two different options, either the Pixlr Editor or Pixlr Express. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the Pixlr Editor. And when I click that, it's going to give me a couple of different options. I can create a brand new image with nothing on it. I could open an image from my computer, which would be really useful if I had photographs that I wanted to edit, or I can open an image from a URL. Now, what that is is a picture on the internet. So you go and you find a picture that you want to edit, you right click on it, and you copy the image URL. And then you come back and you paste it into this box. And once you've done that, the picture will be imported into Pixlr, which is really convenient. Now, once you get into Pixlr, you're going to notice a couple of different things. First of all, up in the top right here, you've got a uh, bunch of menus. And we'll look at these individual menus uh, in another uh, tutorial. But for now, notice this box here. These are your tools. This is what you're going to use to edit your picture. And each tool has some different options. So for example, when I'm in the crop tool, you'll notice up here I can edit the uh, constraint of what I'm cropping. Uh, if I'm in the brush tool, I've got different brushes I can use. I can adjust the opacity. There's, there's a lot of different options there. So I'm going to come back here to the crop tool. And what I want to do is I want to change the constraint to a square. So I'm going to change the aspect ratio to a one to one, which will give me a square. And then when I come back to my image, I click and drag across Picard's face. And you'll notice I have a square now. Now I can drag this around to make sure it's right where I want it. And then when I hit enter, it crops or cuts off the sides. And I didn't do a very good job there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, control Z. I'm going to try that one more time here because I didn't like the way that ended up cutting out. And I'm going to make sure it's kind of in the rule of thirds here and enter. All right, that's a little bit better. So now that we've got the picture cropped the way we want it, let's take a look at this navigator over here. Now the navigator helps you uh, zoom in on the picture if you want to. You can zoom out of the picture. You can drag around the picture to uh, get to the part of the picture you want to edit. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out because I don't need to do that right now. Uh, we've also got a layers window here. And that's going to be helpful in just a couple of minutes. And a history window. So you can notice here that I've done two things. I've opened an image and I cropped it. Let's say I wanted to go back to the original image. I could just click on open image and there it is uh, in its original glory right there. Uh, let's go back and crop it again. And now what I want to do is add some text. So I'm going to come back over here to the text tool. And when I click on it, my uh, cursor uh, turns into something that looks like it's from Microsoft Word. And when I click on it, you'll notice a box pops up. And now I can start typing. And I can drag this text around. I want that to be in the center. In fact, I'm going to center it right here. Uh, and I want to different font. In fact, I just want a generic like Arial font right here. And I can change the size of it. I can make it bigger, which I want to do. 
a little bit more. And there we go. And I can also change the color of the text here. And I want to make that text white. All right. And then I want to add some more text down here. That was a little bit bigger, so I want to bring it down here. And again, I want to make it white. And I hit OK. Now that we've got two uh, different boxes of text, if you look at the layer window over here, you'll notice each layer of text was different, di given, well, a different layer. So each piece of text was given a different layer. So now instead of one layer, which is the background, on top of the background, I've got two different layers of text. And that's going to be really important in future tutorials where we're really going to use these layers. For now, though, if you notice the text here doesn't have a lot of contrast. You've got white text on a light background when you're looking at Picard's head here, for example. So what we need to do is add an outline. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna click there. And then this little box here is layer settings. So I'm gonna click on that. No, I'm not. I'm gonna right click on the layer and click on layer styles. And then there's this option right here for outer glow. So I click on outer glow and I'm gonna change the color here to black. And then I'm gonna to wanna to up this hardness. And you notice you can see the change in the font or in the writing as you make these changes, which is pretty useful. And I'm gonna make the size about there. And that makes the text a lot easier to read. Now I could do the exact same thing on the other text down here, or I can right click on it, click copy layer style, and then right click on this layer and click uh, paste layer style. And you'll notice it does it for me. And now I've got this image here that I want to save to my computer. So the way I do that is I come up to the file menu here and I click save and it gives you a couple of different options. I'm going to go ahead and call this extra credit meme. And the format is there's a couple of different options here for you and it kind of gives you an idea of what each one is good for. So JPEGs are good for most images. They compress the file, which makes it smaller. You lose a little bit of quality, but not usually enough to make a difference. You've got PNGs, pings, which are good for uh, if you have transparency in it. And then the only other one I want to talk about for a second is this PXD uh, file. The PXD file is a Pixlr file. So if you're not quite done with this picture, if there's other editing you want to do with it later, you can save that as this, open it up next time, and all those layers will still be there. But when I click JPEG, it's just going to get rid of all my layers. And then you can select the quality, and it'll tell you how big it is. So I'm going to make the quality 100% and hit okay when i hit okay it gives me the option to save so i'm going to call it x wait it was already there sorry extra credit meme i'm going to throw it on my desktop and i'm going to hit save and now my image is saved on my desktop right I got too much stuff on my desktop. That's embarrassing. Right here. And now it's ready for me to share with the world. So that is how Pixlr works. If you have any questions about Pixlr, please consider leaving it in the comments. If this tutorial was helpful for you, you know, it'd be awesome if you subscribed. It'd also be awesome if you hit that like button. Thank you so much for wa watching. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. J Corwin, uh, Instagram at Mr. J Corwin. 
YouTube, Mr. J. Corwin, noticing a trend. Facebook, I think, is even Mr. J. Corwin. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.